title. Shalom. Shalom. Diligent men in GMS. Not you slackers. You know, doing a total of you you got almost about approximately let me do this let me do the math let's see if the math is mathing by the way i'm going to entitle this video let me take this down bricks and the motb one and the same bricks and the motb one and the same eventually the bricks and these various currencies they call it a, a basket of currencies to make one current C currency excuse me anyway let me just say this <clears throat> the, I always bring this out once in, bring us out once in a while here and there give diligence to make that call in the election sure Peter said that uh, one of the apostles the head apostle uh, the rock as uh, Yahweh Shai referred to him as made him the head man the apostle Paul said that you all show the same diligence so if I'm doing a video every day you should be doing a video every day and not a 10 not a 5 minute video not a 10 minute video but sometimes I'll do little short videos but I'll do long videos too sometimes I go real long an hour, two hours that's, you know, I believe that's the spirit hit me the spirit might hit me right now but I'm going to try to make this short and go to the point you got, let me open up the calculator calculator Okay, let me go 24, 24 times 7, which is 7 days a week, equals 168 hours, almost a hundred, 2 hours shy of 170 hours. Inside of 168 hours. 170 almost hours in a week you only do what amounts to an hour video maybe an hour and a half video and when I say that I mean you do a little five minute video here a little ten minute video there you might take two three days off it might do a 15 minute video there that's, unaccept that's, that's unacceptable. You're not diligent. You're living life. Mm. You're going through the motions. It's not mm. coming from the heart. Mm. You know, it's, it's like in school. When I was in school, elementary school, you, they would have tests. So I said, what's passing? Mm. They would say 65. I said, okay, I'm going to get a 65 or a 70. I just did enough. I didn't, I didn't give a fuck about no fucking school. You know, I ain't trying to achieve nothing in the school system. I knew the school system was bullshit. I told the principal, I said, this guy, what, what, what's your problem? Well, I said, this is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. That there's a uh, term, I believe I heard this, uh, the, the school to prison pipeline, which, uh, means the school system is set up like the prison system when you go eat it just, the tables are set up you get those trays you go to any school you look you can go to any public school that's i'm saying in new york okay all right shalom i want to start off by giving all praises let me say brakata yahawa brakata yahawa shai brakata yahawa brakata yahawa shai brakata yahawa brakata yahawa shai Call Halal La Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, 
Bahashim, Racha, Kordash, Double Honest, Tamar Apostles, Elder Bishops, Hair and Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. Back here again, here to do a quick lesson. All right, hopefully an edifying lesson to those of the whole four elect. And may you get something from the lesson that builds upon your faith toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, like, as you see, I let Apostle Taha uh, video play because in the introduction of his video, you know, he's, uh, you know, spitting that fire. All right. And I had looked up something, right, because he uh, inspired me to do this lesson today with this video which the key word is diligent so i looked up in google find a man who is diligent all right find a man who is diligent okay so it says it says diligent of persons constant in application persevering in endeavors assiduous uh industrious not idle not negligent not lazy this word simply means the old-fashioned concept of hard work persistently applied with dedicated focus all right so that's diligence right and you know the scriptures say give diligence to make your calling and election sure so what apostle tahar is getting into all right is very edifying it is very hitting home you know Especially for the brothers who know this truth. It's very important to be diligent because the scriptures say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And I want to grab a few words, uh, well, a few scriptures on diligence. But let's go back into this, right? It says, find a man who is diligent, right? That's what I typed in. And it says, diligent, right? Which we could look up the word diligent, which this is here, you know, this is good itself. Diligent of persons constant in applications persevering in endeavor assiduous industrious not idle not negligent not lazy this word simply means the old-fashioned concept of hard work persistently applied with dedicated focus and we got to have dedicated focus in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because this is a serious thing all right this is not a joke you know, it's not something we just want to be a part of because it's, it look cool. This is a serious thing. All right. Our lives are on the line. When Jacob's trouble hit, when the prophecy of the Lord's, um, the prophecy, when the prophecy of Jacob's trouble come to pass. All right. You're going to be in great danger. So our lives are on the line. Even now, before Jacob's trouble, our lives are on the line. Because we put our bodies as a living sacrifice for the Most High. We go out each week. All right. We prophesy. We do our videos. You know, we fight against the elements. We fight against the demons on these people. Of our own people. The devil himself. The wicked. These other nations. All right. And for jokers out there that lack faith. You know, they would say. They would say we made ourselves a target. All right. That's why you have certain Israelites, a part of these different Israelite groups that are called, that are basically secret Israelites. You know, they don't want to put their face out there. That's why they make these channels with uh, no, 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 um, no work on the channel. You know, these fake pages or I wouldn't say fake pages, these created pages with no edification on it, you know, because they're afraid of showing their identity. At the end of the day, if you got an email, Esau know who you is. There's really no running nor hiding. The scriptures say, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Meaning he hides himself in the shadows of the Almighty, which that is, that's in Psalms 91. All right. They're hiding themselves in the word, which is Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, I always say this. I bring this up. Hiding in plain sight. Now, I remember being in school. And, you know, you in ninth or seventh, eighth grade or whatever elementary school and you got your homeboys and shit. And what happens is when you go to class, 
especially like on the first day of school when you realizing who's in your classroom and you know you with your boys y'all want to sit together right you want to sit together so y'all sit together but y'all sit in the back of the classroom you know and here it is the teacher when he stands in front of the classroom and mind you when you sit in the back of the classroom with your boys you don't look to be called upon you don't want to really participate you want to goof off with your homie you want to laugh and giggle you know flirt with the girls or something be the cool guy but what happens is then when the teacher stands in front of the class he sees more of the back of the class than the front of the class so me myself which me knowing that when i was about seventh eighth grade you know i didn't want to be called upon and you know, i didn't want to you know participate i wouldn't sit with my friends i would sit in the front of the class all right and most of the time what would happen is my boys would be back there and they would be getting picked upon with the teacher getting in trouble getting kicked out you know when they didn't want to participate you know they wanted to just blend in but I blended in because I sat in the front and I'm thinking about this because of the truth. I'm just coming back to my mind because of this truth. You know, when you think you're hiding, you're really being seen. And when you're being seen, you're actually hiding through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because the Lord is our protection. You know? Being on the front line ain't a bad thing all the time. Depending on the situation. <laughs> you know? So Salakia, that came to mind. So it says, the word simply means, which is diligent, the old fashioned concept of hard work, right? You work hard for something. The Lord said, faith without works is dead. All right. Faith without works is dead. Christianity shows you that they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. So even though you have a zeal, that, that that doesn't necessarily let you know you have faith. You know, you can believe, but what is it that you're believing in? Because you're supposed to know who you worship. Okay? You got those that have maybe a sincere spirit to believe in God, which I'm talking about Israelites in these Christian churches, right? In these government churches. But if it's not according to the true knowledge of the Lord, what good is it? All right, you got to know the truth. So what I say, Salaki, let me read this again. Hard work, right? It says the word simply means the old fashioned concept of hard work, right? Hard work. We got to work. Faith without works is dead. So we got to put forth the work and we in the last days, you know, we in these uh, latter times where, man, we're at a time where the Lord is going to is going to crack these clouds, man. This is the time that the true prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh have been looking for. That these prophecies, these last few prophecies will come to pass. You know, the great, the great coming of our Lord is near. The kingdom of heaven is near. So, faith without works is dead. You got to put forth the work. And at this point, like I always been saying, this is a lifestyle. It's not a fab, it's not a phase. It's not just to be a part of something. This is our lifestyle. This is what you do. This is what we do. All right. You wake up, you sleep, you know, you how about you, how shot. And and for those that, you know, that, you know, because sometimes Jake is real simple. We got to break up. Babe, we got to break up baby food, you know, sometimes with Jake because Jake be so simple. That doesn't mean we're, we're you know, we don't have a life. All right. You know, brothers work out, brothers have, um, of course, their responsibility, brothers have talents and doing other things. But our primary focus, it, focus is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which I'm going to get back to this. It says the word simply means the old fashioned concept of hard work persistently. Now, what does persistently mean? Let's look up in the Collins English. Persistently. If something happens persistently, it happens again and again or for a long time. All right. And what we do, we do our videos again and again, again and again for a long time. 
our apostles here in Great Millstone and the elder bishops, right, been in this thing for over 20 plus. Apostle Sahar, 30, I, I think, I think it's 30, Salakia, all right? But it's been a long time that the prophet's been prophesizing the same thing that happened in the past of the ancient prophets. They prophesied for many years before the prophecy came to pass. And what they did, they did it again and again and again for a long time. So it says, if something happens persistently, it happens again and again or for a long time. All right. So the word simply means the old fashioned concept of hard work persistently applied. Right. Applied. <laughs> it's like you. The word applied matters. You just don't skip over the word applied. Applied matters because the scriptures say don't be just a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. Meaning you got to apply this truth in your life. You know, it has to be in you. You know, Apostle Tar always uh, go over to Ezekiel when you say eat the roll. You know, we got we all have to eat this roll. All right. So the word applied, Collins English. An applied subject of study has a practical use rather than being concerned only with theory. All right. So a, an applied subject of study has a practical use. All right. Because it's being used. What's applied means you're using it. All right. We don't just, you know, go over the scriptures for play play or just to hear stories. You know, we apply it or just to learn wisdom. We apply it in our daily lives, man. All right? In our daily lives. So, you know, brothers, and I speak for myself first. I hope the Lord, Yahweh, Bashmi, Shai, keep the brothers that are diligent. And I hope to stay diligent if I'm diligent. All right? I want to push more to be more diligent. You know? I pray, Yahweh, Bashmi, Shai, for the Lord's elect that's diligent. All right? Because they're putting in the work. What did Yahweh Shah say? Um, what did he say? The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Roughly paraphrasing. The laborers are few. So so the the, the diligent brothers. That's what I'm going to title this lesson after Pastor Tahar said. Diligent men. All right? Lord willing, I can remember that. I'll title the lesson that. Diligent men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. These diligent men are putting in the work. And if you are called into this thing, you want to be a part of that. You should want to be a part of that. So do your work. The orders that Apostle Tahar give out, some guys get emotional about it, but they don't see it through the spirit of the Lord. I'm thankful. I'm very thankful that the Lord set up these, these good men. I, you know, I, 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 well, no man is good as Yahweh Shah say. I'll say righteous men. Okay? I'll say that. The scriptures say, let others speak well of you. Okay, and for um, let me say for the orders that that we are under is is orders of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It benefits us, <laughs> like the law. The law benefits you. It's not a oh man, the law, man, damn, I gotta do this now, damn, the Sabbath, you know. It benefits you. All right, so it says. Hard work persistently applied. So hard work persistently applied. When we work out, right? If you work out and if you ever got through it, meaning let's say you've been consistent and working out, we all can we all can relate for those who work out and that been in some sort of shape. All right? That been in some sort of shape working out. You know that there's times when you go to work out that is that is it's hard you know your mind is not there the body's there but the mind is like nah we can chill take a break or let's say you know you you kind of had your cheat days and you did too much you had some yai yun and had some liquor and kind of overdid it but you on your workout again monday morning right when you get in there monday morning and you doing what you're doing it's, it's, it's you fighting against your mind, your, you know, the, the mind and the flesh that's telling you, just chill. 
And you know that once you break through that, you get that sweat, you get that workout in, that day is done, you feel all good again. You feel that fresh, you feel good, you know, because you fought and you broke through, all right, to get back where you was at. It's a mental thing, man. So how much more in this truth, all right? So it says hard work persistently applied with dedicated focus. That's having dedicated focus. And it's also, can't forget the word, the key word, passion. I'll say passion is given to the diligent men. Passion. You know, when you love something, when you do it because you love doing it, not because you dragged to do it. You love doing it. It's not a burden to you. You look forward to doing it. And when you don't do it, you feel bad. You know, so to the diligent men, the Lord have given you passion, man. All right. For the men that's being lazy, you ain't got the passion. And if you ain't got the passion, more so you ain't got the faith. You know, sometimes you might just need a pick me up. Apostles always going into this topic. Bishops always going into this topic. Brothers in general on down going into this topic to give you that pick me up. You know, motivation is one thing, but dedication is another. All right. Matter of fact, motivation is one thing, but discipline is better. Motivation is good. It's great because it gets you inspired, you know, but discipline is what you want because no matter how you feel, you get it done. You know, so discipline is better than motivation. All right. So I'm going to read it again. Hard work persistently applied with dedicated focus and really doing this work. It's not hard if you have the passion and the faith with it, the faith first and foremost, and then the passion behind the faith to go with it and having the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai through the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. You can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Just say that. All right. You can have faith, but the spirit of the Holy Spirit has to be with you. You know, if you're a teacher or prophet to do the lessons, let's not get that screwed. OK, so dedicated focus, hard work, persistently applied with dedicated focus. Socks like I'm stressing this because I wanted to kind of chew all the meat, you know, get all the meat off this bone, if you will say. All right. So find a man who is diligent. Right. Find a man who is diligent in his work. Find a man who is diligent in his work. That's what I looked up. All right. So now real quick. Uh, get out of here. OK, so now I would like to do this. This is a um, couple scriptures, right? Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul, the soul of the slug guard desireth and have nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The slug guard desireth those things, but he don't go out there and do anything to get it, to achieve it. You know? Scriptures say if you if you you ask not, you receive not, roughly paraphrasing. But far as receiving, you gotta go out and get you know you got to be a doer you know you want to receive something but with no work that's not possible you know while we put forth uh well while we put our soul and spirit into this word right which we are a part of and called to do the lord look out for us uh physically you know mentally and spiritually you know, because repentance is what? Being renewed in the mind and washed by the word. So it's a miracle that brothers have um, their minds has been transformed. All right. Uh, into into the walking in the word of the Lord, walking in, in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's a miracle in itself, man. OK, so it says the soul of the slug guard desireth and have nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat now i'll say this you know you're looking you know in that time of jacob's trouble or you know even now you know before jacob's trouble prophecy come to pass 
man, we need all the mercy we can get from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Be in diligence, the Lord is going to answer your prayers. All right? Yahweh Shai said, whatever we shall pray for in his name, we will. he will give it. All right? So if you're not diligent, why you think you're going to receive? That's why, you know, when you start to get sluggard, if you don't read those signs from the from Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, then you know you're just basically losing the spirit or the spirit's being taken away from you. And those signs be, you know, start catching hell. You know, shit that, you know, just come out of nowhere. Right? Um, start getting in some sort of trouble, you know, trouble that your job about to get fired, you know, the boss. You know, you get into it with somebody at the job. Like, you, you got to read the sign, man. Every brother has their lot. Every brother has their lot. And you have to, uh, you know, scriptures say the spiritual man judge of all things. So you have to know you. You have to know your, matter of fact, Elder Apostle Gabar, he mentioned years ago in a few lessons how, and that stuck with me, you have to build your relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So you should know, ain't no excuse, you know? When things happen to you through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you spiritual, you know why. First you ask the question, damn man, you know, did I, did I fuck up? Did I do, you know, or dang man, you know? You start asking those questions because the spiritual man judge of all things. And then he get on the ball, yeah, I've been lacking man. Gotta get to it, the Lord, the Lord busting my ass, you know? You know, man. All right? If you know, you know. This is Proverbs 10 and 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. You know, when you... All right, this is carnally, right? And for America, right? And this society we live in. in you got men and women that will work three jobs or you know work two jobs and pick up gigs and shit work every day so they can have money the money's good but all that work is really vanity you you know you doing it for years consistently you may have material things you well off you hey you got it you you know but you constantly at work and it's wear and tear on your flesh. You know? And eventually you work yourself too much, you get sick. And when you get sick, you sick to, sick is what? Close to dying. All right? So those that work hard, they achieve more. Those that's lazy that don't put in the work, they have but little or some, you know? Uh, when you look at it like an athlete, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, right? Those two guys is good examples because they wasn't always talented. They was talented. They Jake, of course, but they made their talent greater by working hard. They put in the work uh, on the court. When, when people, Kobe, you know, when Jordan, both of them, Kobe got it from Jordan, you know, Jordan taught Kobe, you know, behind the door, you know, behind, you know, closed doors. He taught Kobe that method, that mindset, right? He kind of, uh, what you call it, uh, coached him, you know, and Kobe took Jordan moves, right? But the point is, when everybody sleep, he at the gym, he going to practice, he worked hard. These are just some carnal examples today, and that's just far as sports. And what? Their legacy and how great they were on the court were outstanding, amazing. Doing things that an average man can't do. Mind you, both of them guys wasn't always talented. They wasn't always the tallest. You know, they, it was when they were younger, it was other guys better than them. But because they worked hard at their craft, they became great. So how much more us in this word dealing with our profession in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? You know, you're only going to get better because you're going to grow. The more you do lessons, the more you studying, right? The more you studying, the more, the 
the Lord is, uh, uh, let's say your faith gets stronger because now you in the knowing, you know, you, you know, you know, you know, now you're not what if in. that's why it's good to have the knowledge, the knowledge to know. All right. Scriptures say knowledge puffeth up. So you have to be humble. All right. But we're growing in this thing and eventually you're going to, you know, how you say it, you're going to own that craft that you crafting. It's going to come out perfectly through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim was shot. You know, Apostle Paul said, if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? If the Heavenly Father is with, if the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, is with you, who could be against you? Matter of fact, matter of fact, one of my favorite precepts, Salakia, if I'm doing a lot of talking, but just trying to bring out a few precepts, hopefully it's edifying. Um, but uh, I want to bring out this, what was it? I believe it's the book of Psalms. This is Psalms chapter one and verse one. It says the righteousness of, no, excuse me, the righteous and wicked contrast. It says Psalms one and one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water, and that bringeth forth his fruit and his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So it says, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Now, when you look at our channels, our channels are like, you know, trees, or you can say frequencies, right? And every tree, you know, carries its frequency depending on what tree it is, okay? And a tree planted by the rivers is always being fed. It's always being watered. The sun is always up at its time. The water is always, you know, bringing it forth. That's why when you look at rivers in different places of the world, it's the, the bright colors, you know, those rich colors. Tree look real healthy and strong. You know, the water's blue. The grass is green, <laughs> right? It's always getting fed. So we're like those trees and our channels are like those trees. So we do the works on the channel. And if a brother or a sister, right? One of the hopeful elect come across the page, they can get fed by what tree you are. If you are apple tree, orange tree, and so on. They can pluck and eat from the tree, all right? You never know who's eating from your tree, which means they're being edified by the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai through you. All right. That's why we always constantly and consistently keep going over the lessons repeat, repeat, repeatedly, repetitively. All right. If that's if I'm saying that right. All right. You know, we constantly keep going over it because there's always the Lord's elect waking up to this truth. All right. Each and every day. So we get up out of here. So it says. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall be not withered, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but his way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, even Apostle Tahar even mentioned, Guys who are lukewarm, who are not doing, putting forth this work, and they put their hand to the plow. He said, um, "You live in life, and that's true." And he did the math in the beginning of the video. All right, I played it. You can wind it back. Oh, go to Apostle Tahar's video and watch this lesson. Get edified. And he did the numbers on it. You know, you're doing short change videos with no spirit behind it. You know. Uh, he mentioned um, how Apostle Paul, which I don't think, I don't know if he grabbed the scripture, but I did watch this whole video. I just got to probably go back and find it. But he said, Apostle Paul said uh, something about the power, uh, which is the spirit. When he said it, I was like, okay, that's the spirit that has to be with you in your lessons. You know, not just, you know, just doing a lesson with no spirit. That's another thing, man. Just to try to keep up. 
or do do something. We supposed to. Uh, uh, scriptures tell us in the apocrypha, and if you brothers are watching, please put your precepts right. And if you can leave this precept, um, it says we. Uh, I said this last time in one of my lessons, and I forgot I didn't get it. Um, we we uh we profit not for just ourselves, but for those of of uh, that's that's learning. Uh, how it goes, Salaki. I done messed it up. Um. Uh, we teach for uh, not just for our learning, right, but for others as well who 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 are seeking this truth, who of the whole four elect, you know. So it says, "For the Lord Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish." So you brothers that put your hand to the plow and you know living life and not doing your work in the Lord putting spirit in your lessons and, and being passionate about this thing giving it as a living sacrifice hey the lord will take you out all right it's possible the lord gonna take you out he's gonna remove you man now i remember uh i said this before a while back kevin gates that demon that rapper he said uh in one of his songs if you can't be used then you're useless all right if you can't be used then you're useless and at first when he said that I was like, what the hell is this nigga talking about? But then when I meditated on it, I thought about it. I said, nah, he right. If you can't be used, you useless. Now, I think about the account with Yahawashai when he came across the fig tree. You know, there was no figs on it. So he made it wither away. He killed it because it was useless. So that's something to think about, man. All right. So let me, um, I brought that out. So let's read this Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So you shouldn't be, uh, it says weary, you should not be weary in well-doing. What's well-doing? Teaching his word, all right? You know, give it, giving it giving it back to those of the whole four elect for what we learned through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know? So... And let us not be weary in well-doing, because that's well-doing, all right? It says, for in due season, we shall reap. If we faint not, we're going to reap. We're going to have the pleasure, all right, and the goods of this world through our Lord, Yahawashai. Whatever's Yahawashai is ours. So we're going to reap, man. We're going to have servants and slaves, man. All right? We're going to be made judges and gods of this place, you know? So that, that's why Yahawashai also mentioned... Um, Matthews 24 He said he that endure to the end The same shall be saved So we got to endure in this work Diligence Diligence uh, This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 Therefore my beloved brother, brethren Be ye steadfast Unmovable Always abounding in the work of the Lord For as much as you know That your labor is not in vain In the Lord so we're always abounding in the work of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakwadash. And our labor is not in vain. It's not vanity. All right. Hopefully our names will be written in the book of life. And we will be saved and changed. All right. When Yahweh Shai cracked those clouds, being a part of the first resurrection, the Lord hears and sees everything. And every time we do this work, he store it up. Every time we pray, the prayers go up. Every time we do things in well-doing, the Most High sees it, even in secret. You know, don't forget about alms. Alms get, a, get rid of sins. You know? So the Lord sees those things. This is Proverbs 12 and 24. It says, The hand of the diligent shall, uh, shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. It says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. This is Proverbs 22 and 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. This is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High. A workman... That needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice it said a workman, because that's what we are. We are workmen, all right? 
I'm even thinking about Yahweh Shai and the penny. When, when he said, I have a work for you, and you will receive and you will receive a penny. Remember that account. This is uh 2 Peter 3 and 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So we want to be without spot and blameless. You know, we're striving for perfection. You only could strive for, strive for perfection if you're diligent about the work. You focus. All right. And you're persistent. You have discipline. You have faith. You have passion. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Second Peter 1 and 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. And I'm going to leave with that. All right. If we do these things, we shall never fall. All right. We going to prosper in whatever we put our minds to do. Whatever we ask for, Yahweh Shai said he will give. What are we at? Whatever we ask for in his name, he will give, man. And, um, you know, I'm going to say lately, you know, I've been, you know, telling my red and brothers in the camp, you know, uh, lately, you know, the Lord been answering my prayers like this. Anything I ask for, he's been, he been helping out like this, man. I'm thankful. And I hope to stay that way. I want to, you know, who don't want the Lord, you know, who, who who wouldn't want the Lord to answer your prayers, man? You know? So it's best to stay humble. Be diligent, man. You know? And let me play this last part and let Apostle Taha speak. Because, you know, you better get on the ball, man. If this don't strike fire in your ass, I don't know what will. You know, if, if men, if, um, if, if men, I'm going to say this. If men, if men don't get up when the brothers, when the apostles, all right, elder bishops speak the word of Yahweh Bashim Shai and it don't shake you up, then you ain't in it no more, all right? If you ain't getting shooken up no more and you a slug guard and not diligent in this work, and the apostles and the bishops say something and it don't shake you up you ain't in it no more all right you don't have that fear another key word fear the lord fear yahweh bashim yahweh shai you don't have fear but if you of the lord's prophets and you're not prophesizing you're gonna catch major hell unnecessary hell <laughs> you know look at um jonah was it jonah that, that fell into the uh, fish's mouth He ran away from doing the work Jumped on the boat Right Then he had he was, a, he was a righteous man And you know When that account He didn't want those men to die He did a just thing He knew what he was doing was wrong Okay um, I wanted to actually read uh, This book chapter verse here in Jonah uh, Chapter 1 because what Jonah did was a just, he did, he did something just, you know, instead of still hiding and lying, he told these men what he did and him running away from the Lord to do a work. And so when these men heard him, they still proceeded, you know, to keep him on the boat. But because of the raging wind, the waves and the tempest and the storm getting worse, they said to the Most High, you know, Please don't let this innocent uh, man blood be upon them. So they actually, uh, with his permission of Jonah, to throw him off the boat. So let's read that. This is the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 11. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wroth and was temperous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wroth 
and was temperate against them. Wherefore they cried unto Yahweh and said, We beseech thee, O Yahweh, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Yahweh, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. All right, so, you know, I stand that John, uh, Jonah was a just man. And through his permission, they threw him off, and the seas calm. And the Lord dealt with him. A fish came and swallowed him up, and then brought him to uh, where he was supposed to prophesy to. Check that out. He was in a. He said, "I was in a uh, belly of hell." He was in a. He was in hell, which is a condition, you know. So these accounts are there. So Lord willing, man, I pray you were edified. So anyway, that's it. We'll turn next shalom. And if you're not diligent, the Most High is going to get rid of you. He might kill you. you. Get be get diligent. Shalom. All right. So you heard it, man. So I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kodash. Double honors to my apostles, the elder bishops here in Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. Shalom.